Welcome back to Integral Calculus. In this video, we are going to be talking about power series. This is the topic that ties together all of the disparate ideas on sequences, series, and Maclaurin polynomials that we have talked about so far in this unit. A power series is any infinite series that can be written in the form ak times x to the k. And if you think about how that would expand out, right? I've started this at k equals 1, and for a lot of the cases, we're going to actually start at k equals 0. As I've said before, the general rules, the general properties, aren't going to care about the starting point. Uh, but we're finally reaching the point where some of our formulas are going to rely on that starting point. Right, but if we just list out the first couple of terms, we will have a0 times x to the 0, which is just a0. Then we'll have a1 times x. And then we'll have a2 times x squared. And so on. A power series is an infinite degree polynomial. If that makes no sense, that's okay. Honestly, most mathematicians I give that definition to argue with me and tell me that no, that doesn't make any sense either. But a power series is what you get if you start by trying to work with polynomials and you keep going until you get an infinitely many terms. Related to that, a power series is a function. It is perfectly reasonable to write f of x is the sum, k goes from 0 to infinity, of a k x to the k. The next statement, I'm not going to get into actually showing you. I think it makes sense just by looking at the first couple of terms. the nth degree Maclaurin polynomial approximation of a power series. Wow, I know my writing is not always good, but that is particularly bad. I apologize. Anyway, the polynomial approximation is just take the first n terms of the power series. And that's the jumping off point that we are going to use here. I claim, and I'm not going to prove this, in fact, I'm going to take this as a definition. If the Maclaurin polynomial approximations of two functions at every degree are equal, then the functions themselves are also equal. Given any function, if you can write a Maclaurin polynomial, and you can turn that Maclaurin polynomial into a power series, then the power series is the function. 
that should seem weird to you. If you take a function and you write its Maclaurin polynomial approximation and you continue it out and you have a general form for what the terms in the um, polynomial look like and you use those terms to write a power series, then the power series has every Maclaurin polynomial equal and in the limit as you go uh, the sum to infinity the function itself is equal. So our exponential function that we studied previously, we saw that we could write this as 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus dot 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 plus x to the n over n factorial. I claim that if I continue, instead of having to say approximately here, I can say that f of x is exactly equal to the limit as n goes to infinity. So that'll be the sum k goes from 0 to infinity of x to the k over k factorial. In modern analysis, this power series is actually the definition of the exponential function. e to the x is defined as the power series, k goes from 0 to infinity, of x to the k over k factorial. And that's not the only one. I'm not going to go through the derivations on these, but in addition to e to the x, we also have um, power series representations of sine, cosine, arctangent, uh, the reciprocal function, and the natural log function. Although there's a couple of oddities that do show up here I want to point out. All right. The reciprocal function and the natural log function don't behave on their own. And if you stop and think about it for a moment, that makes some sense because those functions are undefined when x is equal to zero. So trying to create a Maclaurin polynomial centered at zero is doomed to failure. Instead of trying to give you a power series based on some other Taylor polynomial, we instead modify the function slightly and look at um, the reciprocal function at 1 minus x instead of at x, and the natural log at x plus 1 instead of at x. That also introduces another problem. The power series representations on the left-hand side of your screen, e to the x sine of x and cosine of x are defined for all real numbers. The approximations or the, uh, the power series representations on the right side of your screen are not. These are all going to have trouble when x is equal to positive 1, negative 1, or both. Um, and that's generally a I guess we'll call it a feature of power series representations. The power series representation of a function has some interval of convergence. There is an interval centered at zero on which a power series will converge 
to the value of the function. Right. The interval centered at zero that goes from negative infinity to positive infinity is the one that we hope for. The interval that goes from negative one to positive one is also centered at zero. At or beyond that boundary, the series diverges. So, I want to talk about that statement a little bit more carefully. There is a boundary point beyond which, or I guess at which, the function will no longer um, converge. Right? The power series becomes a divergent series. If you go beyond that point, you may reach a circumstance where the series will converge again, but there is no longer any guarantee that it will converge to the function you care about. Uh, the arc tangent, the one that's still on the screen here, I believe that that actually does converge everywhere except x equals negative 1. At x equals negative 1, bad things happen. At x equals positive 2, the series, I believe, converges again. The problem is that it converges to something else. We kind of saw that with the uh, reciprocal function. Right? This is one that we tried to model a Taylor polynomial on. Um, so we had an interval of convergence there that went from 0 to 2. At 0, the function diverged. At 2, the function converged, but it converged to a different point. And the polynomial went and did very different things from there on. So those sorts of things are common and just things that we have to deal with when it comes to working with uh, power series representations of functions. Right. We can use things like the ratio test, right? evaluate and determine whether the series is going to converge or not. And here we get to what I was saying earlier when we were talking about tests of convergence. I don't care to analyze what the value of the limit is when this polyno or when this power series converges, because I know it's going to converge to the value of the exponential function. I just need to be sure that I'm talking about a place where it does converge. The one other thing that is interesting about power series is that once you know some, you can use them to figure out other power series. So going back to the exponential, e to the x is the sum, k goes from 0 to infinity, of x to the k over k factorial. Let's say that we needed to find the power series representation of 2 times e to the 3x minus 5. It works exactly the way you think it will. You're going to take your power series, you're going to multiply it by 2, and you're going to replace x with the new exponent, 3x minus 5 to the k over k factorial. And if you want to, you can distribute that 2 across the infinite degree polynomial and rewrite this as the sum k goes from 0 to infinity of 2 times 3x minus 5 to the k over k factorial. You can pretty well work with a power series the way that you hope that you can. 
um, if you want to differentiate or integrate a power series, expand it out and take the derivative or the integral term by term, and then try to combine it back together and rewrite it so it looks like a power series again. That absolutely works. And for a lot of less than pleasant functions, that's really the best way of going about it. Right, but let's end with something kind of on the same vein. I have that sine of x is the sum k goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k times x to the 2k plus 1 all over 2k plus 1 factorial. And I want you to come up with a power series representation for 3 times the sine of pi minus pi x over 4. Take a couple of minutes, see what you can come up with there, and I'll see you in the next video.